Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus steps into the river to be baptized by John. And John voices the question that confuses all of us. I need to be baptized by you, Jesus. And you're stepping down into the water with me? You are the holy, sinless Son of God. And this is a baptism of repentance. Surely you have no sins to wash away. Let it go. Let it be so for now, Jesus says. Okay, Lord, but we still have questions. To fulfill all righteousness, it is fitting for us. It is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. For us, Lord? What do you mean, for us? You mean you and us together? But you're the righteous one. You're the one that needs to make us righteous. We are sinners. You need to wash us. You need to cleanse us. Without you, we could never fulfill any righteousness. Good, says Jesus. I'm glad you're beginning to understand. But we still don't get it, Lord. You have no sin that needs washing away. And if you're down here in the water of repentance, in the filthy water of sinners, then who's going to do the washing? Who is going to lift us up out of the water? Who is going to rescue and save us, Lord? Who's going to save us from sin and death if you're down here with us? And we can't even voice all of our questions before we're interrupted by a voice from heaven. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Well pleased. Boy, we really would love to hear you say that about us too, God. About each of us. So, that, that sounds to us like fulfilling all righteousness. If you were to say, with you, with me, with each one of us, you are well pleased. That would be fulfilling all righteousness. So maybe, maybe if somehow we, we stick with Jesus, then maybe he could make us well pleasing to God too. But Jesus is still down here in the dirty water with us. Wait, wait a minute. Jesus is with us. That kind of reminds me of what we heard the Gospel writer Matthew say. He reminded us of what the prophet Isaiah said. They will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, okay. I'm starting to get it now. Jesus down here in the baptismal water with us. Not for sins of his own, but to be with us, to help us to carry our sins and to take them away from us, to free us from our burden of sin. That makes sense because we also remember Matthew, how he told us about what the angel said to Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. The angel said, you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. But still, if he connects himself to us in the waters of repentance, and if he takes our sins upon himself, then that makes him a sinner along with us, right? If he takes our sins along with us, he becomes a sinner too. If he's one of us, how can he rescue and save us? Now we all, all of us, have to repent before God in heaven. We all, Jesus and us, have to turn away from sin and say, this is not what we want. 
We want the way of God. But wait a second. If we have to repent, if Jesus says it is fitting for us, Jesus and us, to fulfill all righteousness, and Jesus is with us, maybe with Jesus with us, maybe we can do this. Maybe we too could be pleasing to God like Jesus is. But I don't think just saying we're sorry for our sins is going to be enough. You know? Just saying you're sorry. Is that what repentance is? Well, that's a big part of it. It's turning away from sin. But still, there's more to it because we know the Bible says that whoever sins must die. The death penalty is what sin deserves. Oh boy, I, I, I think I see this coming here. I see where this is going. Jesus is with us in the waters of repentance and yet he doesn't repent for us. He says, we are going to do this. And you, just like me, we must repent of sin. We must turn away from sin. But we also must undergo the penalty for sin. Because as we hear St. Paul say in our epistle reading for today, Romans 6, St. Paul says, the one who has died has been set free from sin. And that's the only way to separate sin from this human body. It's a disease, it's a corruption, and the only way to get the corruption out is for the body to die. We must die to sin. Oh boy. So you mean Jesus, when you die, we have to die with you? We're so connected with you that we are, we're together in all of this, in the repentance part, in the dying part. Jesus says, yes. And I tell you, if you are to follow me, you must take up your cross and follow me. And I also tell you, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. Oh boy, it doesn't sound like fun to be connected with you, Jesus. It doesn't sound like something we really want to do, to have to die along with you. That's what it takes. And somehow this time, when, when, that, when that law strikes our hearts, that, oh, we must die to ourselves. We must die to sin. Somehow the idea of even having Jesus with us when we must die doesn't seem to be a whole lot of comfort. Because the fact is, we must die. But here's the kicker. Here is the spoiler. And if you don't know the story, if you've never heard the story, this is going to come as a shock. and It's going to blow you away. And even if you have heard the story before, this is still going to come to, as a shock to blow you away. It's the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yes, death is necessary, but nobody ever said there couldn't be anything after that. And God raised Jesus from the dead. And we know we are connected with Christ. Where He is, there we shall be also. Jesus said that. And where I am, you also will be. And if God raised Jesus from the dead, He's going to raise you and me from the dead. Boom! It, it, it blows your mind. Wow! You mean, we have to go through all that hard stuff. The suffering, the, the being rejected, the dying with Jesus. Yes. But it's okay. It's okay. Because you're not going to stay dead. And that's the great good news of all of us, for all of us. The death part, the suffering, the, the rejecting, it sounds terrible. We're ready to just say, okay, thanks Lord, but no thanks, we're done. But Jesus says, stick with me. It's going to be hard. We are going to walk through the very valley of the shadow of death. But you know what? You need fear no evil, because I am with you. 
My rod and my staff, they comfort you. I'm with you through it all. And I didn't come to take away death from you. I came to be with you as we go through death to life on the other side. And my Father will raise us up and we will be together forever on the other side of death. And my Father now looks at you and at each one of you and he says, you are connected to my son and I see you all as my son, my daughter. I say, you are my son, my daughter. With you, I am well pleased. If you look again at our intro, intro for today, on page, uh, page three of our worship folder, here's the thing. See, this comes from the Psalms. And so many, actually, uh, from the Psalms and Isaiah. But so many times the scriptures we say, is that talking about Jesus or is that talking about us? And the answer is yes. Because it's talking about Jesus, it's also now talking about you. So put yourself in this. Uh, the intro is talking about you now. It's talking about me. Behold my servant. Who's that? I thought it was Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus, but it's you. Whom I uphold. My chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, To me, you are my son or my daughter. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth your possession. To me, Lord? Yes, you. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Wow, that, that's pretty powerful. Whatever the scripture says about Jesus, it also now says about you too. Why? Because our God came down to be with us, to connect himself, even in the filthy waters of baptism, the waters of repentance, to say, we are going to do this together, you and me connected together, because it is fitting for us, for us, to fulfill all righteousness. Because Jesus is going to bring us along with him all the way, through the bad stuff, to all the good stuff to the joy, to the peace. He is connected to us in all things, and we belong to Him, and He to us, and we will be together in the house of our Father. He says, I, I have to go away for a little bit, but you know where I'm going? To prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get you, and I'm going to bring you to be with me, so that where I am, you also may be. And in my Father's house are many mansions. And we're going to be together forever. And it's going to be wonderful. That's what the Christian faith is all about. That's what it means to fulfill all righteousness. When he finally brings us to be with him forever. Forever in righteousness. Forever in joy. Forever in peace. It has to be fulfilled. It's hard work. It's not going to be fun along the way. But we will, he will bring us along with him, and we will be in heaven together forever. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.